everyone. Hello. Hello. Okay, that's on. All right. So my name is Richard Schneeman, or Schneems on the internet. Um, a lot of people in the U.S. Uh, don't know how to pronounce that, so it's kind of like uh, Schnauzer or Schnapps, but it's Schneems. Uh, people over in Europe don't have quite the same problem. Uh, so just a little bit about me. Um, some people might say that I've been in the Ruby community for a really long time. I'm a little married uh, to Ruby. Other people who know me might say I'm literally married to Ruby. Um, and I was explicitly asked to not point out that my wife is not, or that she is not in the audience. Not in the audience. So you got that? My wife is not in the audience. She's not right there. Um, so I also have a dog. I find it very important that Rubius introduce their, their, their pets. Um, I actually had a ridiculous pet name before Tender Love. Uh, Hans Peter von Wolf the fifth is act, he is actually the fifth dog that I have owned or that my family has owned named Hans Peter von Wolf. Um, and they are all dachshunds. It's a long name because they're long dogs. Uh, and we uh, so yeah the the good question. Um, I like some audience participation. Excellent job. Cinco uh, is the is the nickname. So he is the he's the fifth. Um, so you might recognize me from such gems as uh, Sextant, which is now part of Rails 4. Uh, so if you've ever done gem install Rails 4, you have um, routes in your browser. You can go to uh, localhost 3000 um, slash Rails info routes. Uh, if not, if you're still on Rails 3.2, check out the Sextant gem. Um, about uh, 100,000 installs, something like that, going on. I'm shoot, trying to get up there. Uh, recently, I've been working on another side project called um, Code Triage. This is an attempt to get people involved, more involved with open source. It, it works like this. You say, you know what, I want to get involved with, let's say, uh, let's say Rails, but like, I don't know how to. You can go on to codetriage.com, uh, go to Rails slash Rails, and say subscribe. And then what we do is we actually send you one open issue a day for the purposes of maybe you want to just learn about it. Maybe you just want to see like what people are people uh, are having problems with, or maybe you're like, man, I really want to commit into Rails. Like, and then guess what? You get a bug report like right in your inbox, and you can help out. Or maybe it is a pull request that you get in your inbox, and you can like you know help see what that code review process is like. Anyway, however you use it, it's up to you. Give it a shot. CodeTriage.com. I can't promise that I won't like name drop that like ten times in this presentation. Uh, so it was already mentioned I'm an adjunct professor for the University of Texas. Uh, and the only reason I did that was so I could wear a lab coat. Ooh, get, a little, get a little mic love there. Um, and uh, of course, I work for Heroku. So some of you might not be familiar with it. Uh, we're in the developer happiness business. Um, this was an old screenshot taken a long time ago. I think we're up to like 4 million apps, something along those lines. And uh, at Heroku, I actually work on the Ruby Task Force, where I am, in fact, a Ruby Task Force member. <coughs> is actually the team that I work on. And we have Ruby Task Force managers and Ruby Task Force meetings, and you know, we just we have fun with it. OK, uh, Matt's, is, uh, Matt's is a coworker, so Heroku employs, uh, employs Matt's. Now, so I, was, I, I have a little story to tell you before I actually get started with my real talk. I'm sorry, this is like super long intro, but please bear with me. I, I wrote this other gem called Wicked. And um, at one point in time, so if you're not familiar, Wicked is good for building like step-by-step -step, um, actions. So like, if, you know, like an after sign-up flow where you go to you know, add Twitter, add your phone number. Um, that's exactly what it's used for. Uh, like when I heard about Wicked Good Ruby Conf, I'm like, yeah, this is amazing. Like, it's like you know, Wicked Gem Ruby Conf. Like, I'm gonna get accepted automatically. So everybody, welcome to my conference. <laughs> <clears throat> and like, so uh, Austin has this great uh, Metro Rail that I was writing uh, to go and uh, do a little work one day, and I was just I was thinking about this joke, and I was like, oh, this is amazing. Like, I'm gonna totally riff on this joke for like so long. And then I check my email, and. Uh, then it's like somebody reports a huge major security issue in Wicked itself. And I'm like, oh gosh, what do I do now? Number one, if you have a security bug, like don't report it over GitHub issues. Please. Please. Like find their uh, just Google responsible disclosure. It'll give you some, some tips there. Um, so uh, just a little bit about that. If you're using Wicked, somebody can, you know, 
run, uh, hit, your, hit your app with a URL that kind of looks something a little bit like this, which um, Rails will actually translate to something like this. Uh, and if you're familiar with that like dot dot notation, um, you know, it's kind of like going up and down file directories. And oh, database YAML, we might want to, you know, maybe keep that a little bit secret. Um, so Wicked actually has a security bug in it where anyone can see your entire file directory structure, which is outrageously, insanely, horribly bad. Um, so this has been patched. If you're using Wicked, please use Wicked 1.0.1. It's, or the latest. Um, and if you're curious, this was the, this, does anybody see any kind of problems? This is right there. We are, we are just rendering um, a, I mean, you can't really tell it from here, but, but the, the variable the step is actually um, user supplied code. We're not doing any kind of uh, filtering or sanitizing on it at all. And it's, um, eh, it wasn't really, yeah, anyway, so be careful anytime you are dealing with, uh, dealing with user input. Um, remember, sanitizing, it's not just for SQL anymore. <laughs> OK, so um, I please invite you to, oh, you hardly have any laptops out. Normally, I'd invite you to close your laptops unless you're commenting on Rails slash Rails issues. I also added a special addendum just for this conference. You can also be upgrading Wicked. That is, <laughs> you, like, I, yes, please. Um, <clears throat> So, OK, this, and this is also a great thing about being in this room. We have dramatic lighting at my disposal. So, all right. So we've all been there before, right? Where you're, you're, you're kind of like looking through the source code, and somebody's like, OK, hey, you know, that comment, eh, it, it's, it's no longer valid. Or like, uh, this thing, this piece of code, I, I, I inherited it like, uh, I have no idea how it works. Or eh, just look at the source code, right? Who needs documentation? That's for like. You know, Python developers, right? Um, it, so this talk is really all about how I learned to deal with really large chunks of code, uh, being able to get in, get around, uh, and, and get info out without actually having to fully understand the entire system. Um, so first, we're going to uh, we're going to get in, and to do that, we're going to dramatically raise the lighting levels back up to their normal state. Okay, so uh, my favorite. Easiest way to open up a library is bundle open. You just like bundle open Wicked, and bam, it's right. Right, you have the source code right in your favorite editor. Of course, this does assume that um, you have exported your editor. If you haven't already, um, you just set your environment variable editor. So maybe MacVim or maybe Sublime Text. You have to use that little slash w, otherwise uh, your life is not happy. Um, OK, so boom, that was easy. That was like a third of the presentation right there. Like we have time to kill. OK, so next section, getting, getting information out. Um, there are some really cool debuggers inside of Ruby. Uh, there's actually a lot of even cooler debuggers not inside of Ruby. A lot of if you come from a language which has like these, um, like it's built out of an IDE and this incorporated debugger and like, you know, you might be expecting some of that kind of stuff. Um, sure, I love Pry. I love, you know, you know some of the other other things out there. But um, in my experience, really, all you need is puts. Um, you know, sure, you can get away with other stuff. But if uh, my, on my day to day, I'm probably working with about five or six different code bases, and there are usually libraries uh, that somebody else is in charge of. So if I'm going to be committing to a piece of open source, like I can't just add the pry gem to every single gem file I touch um, or, or expect it to be there. So um, is anybody familiar with tracer rounds? OK, a little, little bit. Uh, so in military history, we have, this, um, we have this big problem where at some point in time, we, we went from you know, hand to hand weapons where it's like, oh, if there's somebody over there, you hit them with the weapon versus like projectile weapons where it's like, oh, it's somebody over there, you hit them with this projectile. It's like, oh, hey, that's a brilliant idea. Now we have this big problem where our troops need to aim. And it turns out like aiming is really difficult. If you want to teach somebody how to aim, uh, you know, a, a gun or a bow and arrow, like you actually have to give them a gun or a bow and arrow and have them try over and over and over again. And eventually, like you learn how to use this complex system of like sights and there's these angles and stuff. And at some point in time, some, somebody was just like, you know what? What if they could just see where the last one ended up and then they just correct a little bit? 
And they're like, oh, that's brilliant. Instead of like trying to pre-calculate where this thing is going, we'll just see where it was and then adjust from there. So in Ruby, um, you might not know it, but we actually have a built-in tracer round. So this is what our tracer round looks like inside of Ruby. Um, I love this thing. Just, I, at, for the skeptics, uh, can anybody see my output in my box? What about now? OK, some of you did see it before. But just trust me, like, when stuff is like scrolling past your window, like, this, this really, really helps. Um, all right, brief note on notation. Uh, some of you, this is, should be old hat for uh, some of you, and some of you it might be new. But just a little refresher. Anything that starts with a capital and is in this kind of notation, that's going to be either a class or a module. Uh, the thing on the end of it is going to be the method. And if it is a period in between those things, that means it is a class method or a module method, a singleton method, perhaps, uh, depending on how you want to, uh, want to define that. Or if it's a hash, that's just it's an instance method or like not, not a class method. OK, so I use that a ton. Uh, does anybody use Ruby 2.0? I should totally change this to like 2.1. Um, what about uh, 193? OK, what about like 187? Do you see like the logical progression there? It's like, <laughs> and then the asteroid comes. OK, so 187, just a heads up, uh, totally end of life, no more security updates at all. Uh, so you know that giant security bug? I was like, oh, hey, Wicked just has this. And it was just actually reported to me like last week. Well, guess what? That could happen in like 187. Tomorrow, you wouldn't even know about it. Um, so please check out uh, you know, a more recent version of Ruby. 2.1, 2 the preview is actually out. You can run it on Heroku or you know, maybe even give, give JRuby a little bit of a shot. So OK, so that was sections one and two. Now, now on for like the real meat and potatoes. We're gonna, this is where we're actually going to be using Ruby to kind of navigate and get around, um, get around these libraries. So uh, let's, let's look at a little bit of Ruby, OK? Ruby conference, look at, look at some Ruby. Um, if you want to see where your code is coming from, uh, kernel caller is a pretty easy way to do that. A lot of people get in the habit when they first start writing Ruby of just raising exceptions. And um, you don't necessarily have to do that. You can just use uh, kernel caller. I know by looking at the Ruby documentation, it doesn't necessarily look like that. But um, in reality, it just basically gives you the backtrace. So uh, you can just use uh, caller.inspect, and it will go ahead and give us a really nice array with the file. It's got the line number in there, and um, it'll even give us the method name. So that's just, you might be already familiar with it, just kind of convenient. So use, use kernel.caller. Um, the next problem, or the next tool that we're going to be using a little bit is, um, um, let me see. OK, yes, this, this is like my favorite class in the world that like nobody knows about, or nobody knows that it's an actual class, uh, because it's the name of the class is also the thing that it produces, which is fun. So this is the method class, which I think is amazing that we even have this. You can actually like make methods. You can call like uh, dot method and pass in a into into a symbol and get a method out. Um, you can turn any single method into a anonymous function by doing this. So just a super quick example, we have object.method. So we, we, we got a string. We can call dot method and upcase. So we are actually, the return result of this is actually a method class of the method, which is a little bit difficult to say. Um, it, it doesn't actually run this yet, but we can just call. You can see that it is a method class, and we can just run call on it, and this will produce our upcase string. Perfect, exactly what we thought. <clears throat> So uh, going back to the original question of like where's the method defined, we have a source location method on the method class, which is pretty cool and, again, really difficult to say. Uh, so let's say we've got some source code and, like, OK, we, we all deal with Ruby. We all are familiar with like monkey typing, duck punching. Um, and especially uh, like refinements and all this stuff, it's like, OK, so like, you know, where is this actually being called? Where is this, where is this method defined? So if you call method, you pass it a symbol and call source location on it, then you don't even have to guess. Like, it, it will tell you exactly. Um, it'll give you the file and the exact line number. So uh, you can then just open that up and go right to that method definition. 
Okay, uh, so that's that's kind of like the basic intro and um, some of the tools we're going to be using. I want to introduce you to a real world problem that I actually ran into. Uh, so I, I do a little bit of contributing to Rails, um, and I find it I find it really frustrating whenever I do something and it doesn't end up it, like I think it should or like I think it would. And I, I had this problem where I actually was sending out emails in a, in a Rails application and I um, put HTTP in front of my um, host. So it, there's a host parameter and I was like, oh, it's from HTTP colon slash slash example.com instead of just example.com. So to me, most things in Rails, uh, you can either pass the fully qualified uh, with protocol and everything, and it'll just work. So if you do a link to with an HTTP, it'll just work. Um, if you leave that out, it'll also just work. So in Action Mailer, if you add that in there, it'll actually give you double the protocol. It doesn't understand. It's not smart enough to realize what you intended on doing. Even worse, it'll do this and send out your emails like this. It won't fail. It, like. Your tests won't catch this because nothing will raise an exception unless like, you're actually clicking your links. You'll just push this into production, and one day your users are going to be like, uh, your links aren't working, and I don't know why. And then you'll look at it, and you'll be like, ah. Uh. Yeah, like two days later, if you have users who are nice enough to like, report things. So anyway, uh, it, this, this works. So really, it, it doesn't seem too complicated. We just want to remove that HTTP colon slash slash. But like, OK. Now we've got our problem. We know we, what we want the end result to be. We want to just remove that HTTP, but like how? Has anybody done like bundle open Rails or just looked in the Rails source code? Like it's, it's intimidating. Like there's just a ton of code there, and you don't actually need to understand how everything fits together and how everything um, goes together. Uh, in, instead, we can actually just kind of like start at an, an, an entry point that we know we have and work our way down the stack. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So, uh, all right, um, we know we have this option of, uh, of, I forget exactly what it was, like URL something options. Um, the thing I just said, here we go, uh, default URL options. We know we have this. We know it gets used by a link to. So let's dig into link to. Where is this actually defined? Just you know, put method uh, link to source location inside of your file, render it, and there you go. Like we're one step closer. We can open this file file up, um, do bundle open action pack. It'll just pop open right inside of your favorite editor, and then you know we'll, we'll be looking at something like this. This is our link to section. Uh, kind of a lot of code here, but we've got we've got a uh, an if else. Well, okay, we can just jump to the else section. Boom. Um, I like to actually work backwards a lot of times in these. Like if you if you like code somebody else wrote, kind of sort of makes sense a little bit better backwards. So we actually see that here's where we're generating that that URL. And um, so href is okay. We have we're, we're calling this method um, util escape HTML. We're passing in something else. Here's where we're actually building the URL. Okay. Well, we're we're building that URL from this other method called URL for. That begs the question, which URL for? Naturally, I've, I've already got this open in my editor. I'm just going to hit Control, Command, Shift, F. Like, I'm going to search the entire project. And I'm like, oh, this is super simple. You know, I've got 13 matches across 12 files. <laughs> like, like, why do we have so many URL fours? Um, you know, don't repeat yourself, anybody? Anybody? OK. So uh, if you were paying attention to the first part of this, you might see, like, Obviously, OK, method source location, we got this. So of course, we put our little tracer method in there, or our little tracer around in there. We have method URL for source location. And it spits out exactly what, what we want to see. OK, URL helper, RB. We open that guy up, and the code looks a little something like this. We got a case statement and this section where, OK, so we know we're dealing with a scenario where there's a hash. Um, and we're calling options, and then we're calling super, and it's like, okay, well, we get, you know, I got my, I got my, uh, I got my tool chain, and I totally just cheated by going to the next slide. But like, okay, super, can we call method source location on super? Like, that'll tell me where super is defined. We don't want that. You know, caller is going to tell us where how we got here, but we need to see where we're going. Um, so nothing that we have done so far is going to be able to get us any information into this. Originally, I was like, all right, well, what does super do? OK, super finds all of my ancestors and um, you know, like calls them just basically in reverse. 
So if um, you're unfamiliar with ancestors, you can call it on something like a string, and it'll give you a result back, similar to this. It's string. It's also a comparable. It's also an object. It you know, also inherits from kernel, because it has kernel included, and basic object. So um, if foo doesn't understand a method, then and you call like you can call super on it. It'll be like, oh hey, does comparable have this? Does object have this? Does kernel have this? Does basic object have this? So I thought that was pretty straightforward. Like I'll just I'll find out the ancestors and then just kind of grep around, figure out um, you know which one is the next one up in line that has this. So I run this code. I get a little something back like this, uh, and then I did a little something kind of like this. Uh, you know it like I don't. Do you see which where, where would you even go with this? I'm just going to go to this. Uh, you know, I think it's in the second anonymous class. I think that's where it is. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so instead, all right, are you guys rubied out? OK, good, good. I, can I, like, all right, you're enthusiastic enough. <laughs> um, OK, so we're going to have some more Ruby to the rescue. Here, we're going to take a look at uh, method defined. It's going to tell us if a method is even defined on a given module. So um, if you pass in a string class and ask it like, is the method upcase defined on the string, the answer is yes. Yes, it is. The string knows how to upcase something. If you ask the same thing for an integer, it will tell you, no, we do not, we do not have that method defined. So this is kind of a good way that we can maybe iterate through all of those ancestors and figure out who can actually respond to this method. Uh, so the next thing we're, we're going to be using is um, instance method. So we can actually, uh, instead of just calling dot method on an instance, so user.new.method, we can just call user.instance method. Uh, and that doesn't actually need an exact instance of that object. Um, that's a real big mouthful, but just uh, I think the example kind of maybe speaks a little better than I can explain it. Um, so we're going to be using these two in conjunction to go back to our original problem. And we are actually going to still use those ancestors. We're going to go ahead. We're going to loop through all of them. We're only going to pull out the ones that have URL4 defined. So only, you know, that makes sense. Because we're, we're calling super, it's going to call the URL4 method on one of those ancestors. And um, from that, based on that class, we are going to pull out the source location of that instance method. OK, so everything's kind of coming together now. All right. Uh, when, we, when we run this, we actually get a number of results. And um, I learned a great trick from, uh, I don't know, maybe like preschool slash um, relearn this in high school. It, it's actually a game that you can play whenever you have a bunch of results um, called which one of these is not like the others. So in playing this game, you realize, like, OK, that one and that one and that one are all exactly the same, all pointing at, at the exact same um, instance. And here we go. This one is a little bit different. Turns out it's in action dispatch routing URL4, uh, line number 143. OK, so we're, we're almost done. You guys still with me? Y'all? I'm, I'm from the south. All y'all? Huh? Huh? OK. Um, so at this point in time, like I'm pretty sure it's this one, but I want to just double check, make sure I put in a, another, another trace around. We get a caller. And we can, in fact, verify that, OK, it is coming from the line where we're calling super. So, so we are actually going in the direction that we want to be going. Ruby is, like, I think this is probably one of my favorite parts about Ruby, is like Ruby's smart enough to understand what Ruby wants to do and what Ruby is going to do. And like, you know, I, I try to do the minimum amount of work every, like, for every given task. And like, it, like using Ruby like this, it's, it's almost as if um, I've got a pair programmer with me who's like, you know what? I know what this is going to do. Just let me, let me tell you. I'll tell you exactly where this came from, exactly where it's going. So uh, we can follow the source code even further. We call method, uh, method source location until finally we end up with this giant block of code uh, in route set. So action dispatch routing route set. Yes, this is it. So. Um, it's kind of a little anticlimactic, but we, we, we reach the end of our journey, because this is actually where the return value comes from. Um, here, 
we are actually pulling out uh, the different parts of the URL and just concatenating them. We're not doing, we don't have, like, Rails doesn't have any concept of a URL, like, composable URL class that, like, verifies all of the different sections. Here we're just actually concatenating them. So, um, all right, now, now that we found the, the chunk of code that we are looking to modify, we can actually modify it. We can actually implement our fix. We can, we can go in there and um, do what we want to do. Uh, if, if at this point in time you, you're kind of like, okay, well, you know, I know, you know, I know where the problem is, but I don't necessarily know how to fix it. Or if, like, sometimes, especially if it's a bug in active record, a lot of times you'll be like, all right, here's where the bug is. Um, I have no idea what this code is doing and can't even attempt a fix. Uh, so even being able to reduce the problem and give those kind of, uh, that kind of inputs to maintainers is hugely, hugely, hugely valuable. Um, if you can, attempt a fix, even, even if your fix is not ideal, even if it's just like this huge, uh, horrible, like, horrible fix, it is a fix. And if you give me that bug, or if you submit a bug to Rails and you're like, here's a problem I had, um, you know, here's what I thought was going to happen, here's what actually happened, here's how to reproduce it, oh, and here's actually even a little fix. I, you, like, that's going to help me get inside of your head, get inside of the, the bugs, um, you know, kind of space, and, and say, like, oh, okay, well, now I actually understand what's going on. Um, maybe we can work together to build a little bit of a more maintainable fix. Um, or, you know, of course, definitely, please, please raise an issue. Um, whenever you find this. And again, that's either if you, uh, if you have a fix for it or even if you just got far enough to find the bug. But uh, the, the end result of this particular case was um, Rails 9794 issue uh, was a, a pull request. And this is actually what the end up, ended up, the, the code looks like. So um, again, just yay, string concatenation. Um, we actually are just checking to see if you put a protocol in, inside of there, anything that is like uh, colon slash slash, so it could be FTP, it could be HTTPS, it could be HTTP, and um, we're going ahead and assuming that you, what you really intended was that you wanted that to be the protocol of that link unless you otherwise specify. Um, so this got merged in, and you know, it's not, Maybe not the prettiest, like, not the most like sexy problem that's gotten fixed in Rails, but like these are definitely the things that affect people, like every day. It's not it's not a major feature. It's not routes in your browser, um, but these kind of incremental improvements are the difference between a great framework and an unusable piece of like oh that didn't do what I thought it was going to do. Um, so, in general, like. I try to look for the, the right problems, and um, as a result, the right solutions tend to present themselves. So if, uh, like, in, in this situation, we actually said, we got to the point where we said, all right, you know, this is what I want the expected behavior to be. Uh, and from there, we could say, all right, well, you know, this is the code that actually gets us that unexpected behavior. Let's, you know, let's dig in. Let's, let's go for it. Um, you know, a lot, of a lot of times in here, I mentioned URL4, I mentioned Action Dispatch. I didn't, we didn't have to talk about how does Action Dispatch hook into uh, Action View versus um, Abstract Controller versus uh, Action Mailer. Like, how is that all used together? I didn't know anything about that. I didn't know anything about how the URLs worked. Uh, but we were able to successfully navigate this project and, um, and fix this bug in a multi-thousand line long code base uh, relatively, uh, I mean, this was, this was probably the, uh, this was definitely the, like, I pulled out this as an example because this was the hardest one of these that I've ever had to do. Normally, it's like, it's like one or two lines deep. Um, and people, like, if you actually, like, so I've, I've, I have given this talk before, and it's funny, like, all, all other Rails core members have seen it, and they're like, oh, yeah, obviously, that's just what I do. Like, but I talk to a number of people who, who either aren't familiar with this method, um, or they are, and, but they just assume that it's, like, too dirty. It's, like, too, you know, it's, it's, it's not good enough. But, like, Ruby really does know a lot more about your own source code than you would think. Um, it's, it's pretty smart. Um, I, all the time, I'm like, JavaScript, just tell me what methods this object has. And it's just like, eh. <clears throat> uh, We could have a whole 
dissecting JavaScript with JavaScript talk, but maybe, maybe for another time. Um, so um, just some other things that I use really frequently. So object methods, we can just call dot methods on, on anything, and it'll just spit out everything that it responds to. Well, unless it uses like a method missing hack, uh, which, is, which is great. Like a lot of times, you know, I don't, I, like instead of going to the API or, has anybody used a tool called Dash? So Dash is this, um, I got a couple hands, awesome. Uh, it's a, um, like, I'm assuming almost everybody in here has like a Mac or like a ThinkPad with Linux on it. Okay, so if, if you are in the Mac camp, um, Dash gives you, uh, it's a great API browser and it's, it's freeware with minor annoyances. Um, like I actually paid for it because I go on a lot of planes. Um, but uh, it, you know, instead of having to open up the documentation, sometimes I might know sort of what a method is called and just be able to look at it. Um, or we can actually get the instance methods from that object. Uh, and you can, uh, I typically pass false into that and it will only give me the instance method of, of, like if I called it on a string, it would only give me the instance methods of string, not of string and comparable and basic object and all of those. So it'll give you a much smaller set. Um, so I, I, I already mentioned that it's not always this complex and you shouldn't be intimidated uh, about going into some of these libraries. And uh, like I learned a ton of just how to even, like almost everything I know about the Rails code base, I learned from stuff like this, uh, from, from these, uh, these deep dives. And I figured out like eventually, I'm, you'll, you'll kind of get to the point where you'll say, oh, you know what? I bet I know what part of the code this is in and actually go in and look at it. And it's not just for Rails, it's for your own, own libraries. Um, and like one of the things that a lot of um, newcomers to open source, I don't think really understand is that they are open source. You are open source. Welcome. You're part of the community. Uh, and if you, know, if you hit a bug and you're like, man, why has nobody fixed this? Or why has nobody like, reported this? It's like, guess what? It is, you know, it is your lucky day because you get to fix this bug or you get to, to report it. You, know, you don't have to like, fix everything. It's, it is a community effort. Um, but you know, definitely, please, without people trying things like you know, release candidates and Rails 4, Rails 4.1, um, we can't find the bugs to fix them. So definitely, please, uh, get a little bit more involved. And in the process, even if you end up not reporting the bug, even if you find out that it's already fixed somewhere else in a later version, you will, you will become a better developer looking at other people's code. Um, like, I don't know, asterisk, probably. Massive caveat. Um, so yes, go from a bug reporter to a bug fixer, uh, troubleshoot, troubleshoot other people's code. Um, this is actually a funny side benefit I found is that I find like sometimes I'm writing code and I will write it slightly different if I'm considering, you know what, somebody else is going to be troubleshooting a bug in this section of code. And like if I do this weird like method missing super injection like changing classes uh, weird thing, then they're not even going to be able to use any of these tricks to find out what I did. So you know what? Maybe, it's, maybe there's a more maintainable solution. Um, and to, I guess, like the, if, you, if you leave knowing nothing else, uh, source location will show you um, where you're going, and caller will show you where you've been. And I mean, programs are just a logical execution of uh, bits and bytes, and you're, you're, you're pretty good to go. Let Ruby show you the way. <clears throat> thank you, thank you. I did actually have one last uh, plug for Code Triage. <laughs> you can now open your laptops and sign up for CodeTriage.com. Um, I've also got a book out uh, called Heroku Up and Running. It is in the printer, and even though this cover doesn't have my name on it, the one you purchase, the, the one you purchase, <clears throat> <clears throat> will. Uh, so um, I think I've got a little bit of I got, got a little bit of time for some questions. Um, anybody have any? Yes. When you so this example, you found something in Rails that you wanted to play with. Yes. Um, how do you? What's the sort of happy path to go in there and get your code in there without screwing up all your Rails code? Okay. So this is a um, this is a really good question. Um, I'm going to repeat it for those who didn't hear. Uh, like, how can you actually fix that code without screwing up everything else? Um, at, 
whenever you do bundle open, you are actually playing with live code. Um, if like the most annoying things, thing I think I ever did was like open up Ruby gems and put a puts in there, and then accidentally close the file, <laughs> and then forever on, I had like equals 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 like anytime I would do anything with Ruby gems. Um, that was a bad experience. I ended up actually uninstalling uh, Ruby gems to get rid of that. So I what I try to what I tend to do is I actually debug with live code um, in my live project. Uh, it's important to note that these changes are local to your machine, right? If you change, if you do bundle open action dispatch and make a change and you fix it, you didn't fix it on your server, you didn't fix it on your friend's machine, you fixed it on your machine. So that is why it is important to um, either push these changes upstream to, you know, into Rails or into whatever whatever repository you're working with, uh, or even do something like um, pull it out into a like a, a, a fix, um, some sort of like a gem, something that's that's shareable, um, ideally shareable. Like you could just override the methods and like do some funny stuff in, um, like we, we are in Ruby land, so some people do have just like a hacks directory where they just load that code. Um, I find that's not very maintainable because what happens when somebody actually fixes that section of code in, in Rails and then you have a hack that like unfixes that code almost, um, so uh, the, my best suggestion there is if you end up, do end up hacking something for that individual product um, is to actually put a, a test in your, in your project that verifies the original method or original class or original behavior failed. So that if you do upgrade to say Rails 4 and Rails 4 fixes that problem, you'll know and then you can actually take out your hack. Um, did, that, did that answer your question. Oh yeah, and I'm also really careful about not closing files until I've removed all of my putses from them. Yes, in the back. Um, so method defined actually, uh, it sees if a, if an instance of that class would, would respond to that. So at that at that moment, um, sorry, did uh, I guess the, the, I'm horrible at this. Uh, the question was, was there a reason I uh, use method define instead of respond to? So um, we have a, a the input is a user class. If I say you know respond to like user dot respond to and pass it in GitHub um, GitHub username, it's going to say no. I don't know how to do that. But if I say user dot new dot respond to GitHub username, it's going to say yes. So is it just the same as calling response to on Yes. Yes. Um, exactly. And and I could have done that, but I don't necessarily know how all of those objects are instantiated correctly. So this is a short circuit that we don't have to do that. Yes, yeah, that is, that is true. That would have short-circuited this, and then that would have been a different talk. Cool, good question. Um, I had, okay, one more. Who's gonna, I, there are three hands right now. The first person to stand up. Who wants it? Who wants it? <laughs> Woo! Yes. So, um, is there is there a better way to do this? Is I guess maybe the best way to. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I do know that, I mean, there are several like Ruby specific editors that are trying to solve this problem. Um, I think like JetBrains maybe has one, RubyMine. Um, I haven't used any of them though. Uh, I don't know of anything off the top of my head, that, like a Vim or an Emacs set of tags, unfortunately. Um, and like, it sounds weird, but like, even though this is kind of obtuse and like sort of verbose, it's not, it's not that bad. Like maybe if you go to Lauren's t tooling talk, he'll like rage against them not having this feature supported by the language, uh, and and part of it is just 
because Ruby can change so much actually at runtime um, is really the, the root of, the, of like your editor being able to actually understand uh, Ruby. But I think um, if anybody is like interested in working on that, that is a hugely valuable, like you know what would have been great is for me not to have had to have learned this for you all not to have had to have been here and everybody just be like, oh yeah, we just click like a star in our like IDE and then like next, 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 obviously. Um, so like one day I do hope that almost all of my talks are obsoleted. Uh, and if you know anybody who's interested in working on those kind of things, like I would support you to support them. That was kind of a non-answer, but uh, did I address a little bit of it? <laughs> Yeah, sorry. I was going to bring a Red Rider BB gun, but didn't. Um, cool. I'll, I'll be around uh, for you know, like the rest of the conference. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions about this. Um, Heroku code triage, dramatic lighting, um, security, massive security vulnerabilities in your semi-popular open source repositories. So thank you.